My name is Paul Whitford. I'm a professor of physics at Northeastern University and a senior investigator in the Center for Theoretical Biological Physics, an NSF Physics Frontier Center. Today I'm going to tell you about how the SARS-CoV-2 virus is able to enter our cells through use of a protein called Spike. The virus is a spherical object that is covered in spike proteins. We will now zoom in and look at one of these proteins to see how it allows the virus to enter a cell. First, the virus approaches the cell and recognizes the ACE2 receptor. To do this, the protein undergoes the rearrangement that allows it to bind. State-of-the-art experimental techniques can now provide images of this protein as it works. After the protein binds the receptor, it must shed about half of its mass and get ready to attack the cell. What you are seeing now is a simulation of that process. Those three long strands must reach out and bind to the host cell. When it finds a cell, it must then pull the virus towards the host. To do this, the protein uses energy to pull the virus closer to the host and eventually into it. During this trajectory, you will see multiple intermediates that were predicted by theoretical models and confirmed experimentally. Eventually, the protein will pull on the virus long enough that the virus will reach the host cell and allow the infection to occur. Now we will see how an antibody can stop the spike and provide broad protection against many variants of this virus. The antibody must bind a site on the spike protein, which is shown in green. When it is bound, the spike is still able to reach the host cell. However, it is unable to pull the virus all the way back to the cell, as it does when the antibody is absent. Since this binding site is conserved in many variants of the virus, this antibody may provide broad protection against many of the variants of concern, which brings us one step closer to a vaccine that is effective against all strains of COVID.